I just want to welcome everyone again. Uh, my name is Mark Kapsinski. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer here at Gooden. And today's webinar as part of our holiday webinar series is called Overcoming Shipping Challenges for this holiday season. And uh, we're, uh, we're going to cover off on a few different things, uh, just some quick logistics. Uh, again, uh, the session's being recorded, so you can share it later. We'll send you a link and a password to it uh, after the session. Um, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to pop them into the chat window. I'll be monitoring that and I'll pick up questions for the panelists to answer. And, and then we'll also have some additional Q&A at the end of the session. And we'll try to get everything uh, or as many of the topics uh, covered as well. Um, all right, so let's dive in on this one. So uh, we're gonna, we'll, I'll introduce you to who we're having on our panel today. Uh, so we're pretty fortunate today, uh, a little special treat for you. Uh, cover off a little bit on uh, what Gudin does. So I know sometimes uh, there's a few new folks to the Gudin uh, partner community, uh, merchant community. So we'll make sure that we cover off on a little bit on Gudin. Uh, talk about some of the economic hurdles that we're seeing, uh, sort of the macro factors that are affecting shipping uh, all across the industry, and then end up with some best practices and things to look out for for the holiday season. So um, first off, uh, we're very fortunate to have uh, Nate, uh, goes, uh, Nathan, or goes by Nate uh, Riley, who actually heads up all of our shipping activities here at Good. And so Every single package that ultimately gets delivered to your uh, consumers, uh, Nate's uh, team is working on making sure that all of that is handled properly and gets out to the folks at the right place at the right time. So Nate, welcome. Thanks for being here today. Uh, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, uh, dragging you out, right? Uh, you know, you're supposed to be at the <laughs> warehouse or something, right? Uh, packing right. boxes. I usually, I usually hide behind my computers, but uh, here I am. Nice. I even well, shower uh, for this. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. And put the hat on too. So there you go. <laughs> well, Nate, welcome. Uh, we're glad to have you. Um, and for a super special treat, we were able to actually ask our CEO, Brian Rainey, to come out. Uh, Brian is, uh, besides being our CEO, is just tremendously passionate about shipping and has a ton of knowledge about the space and what's happening, uh, especially a lot of macro trends, and really has, uh, you know, uh, thought a lot about shipping and how that impacts all of your businesses. So uh, we're super lucky to have Brian. Brian, do you want to say hello to everyone? Yeah, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Appreciate you guys joining. I know shipping isn't always the most uh, exciting topic, uh, but it's certainly incredibly important. Uh, it's one of the reasons that, I, uh, that I'm so deep in the weeds with it. Uh, we can produce an item perfectly, but if we can't ship it, then, uh, then we really haven't done our job. So uh, really happy to, to, to be here today. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate you making the time out of your day. I know you're always so busy, so uh, appreciate it. And I know the folks out listening will, will really value uh, your insights and Nathan's wisdom. So let's get it right into it. Uh, so uh, for new folks to Gooden, just wanted to uh, kind of give you the quick primer on what we do. So our whole uh, slogan or phrase is that you sell, we fulfill. And so the whole idea uh, is that you design uh, different products and items that are uh, then layered or ultimately layered on our white label products. So you're in charge of the creative and figuring out what's going to sell into your customer base and your audience and simply uh, come up with those designs, add them onto uh, products that we make available through our, our uh, admin tools in what we call our product hub. And you can then push those out into your online store uh, through various integrations that we support, including things like Shopify and uh, WooCommerce. And ultimately, uh, you're going to sell those products that you've designed and, and leverage Gooden for uh, to your customers or your consumers. And um, we like to think that uh, that's what you focus on, which is you focus on what you do best and then we'll handle the rest. And so uh, once you sell that item to your customer or your consumer, uh, that order gets routed over to Gooden and we're gonna take that order and route it to an appropriate manufacturer within our virtual network 
and make sure that the item is produced. And uh, we use the term printed, so produced or printed, and uh, ultimately packed up in a box and shipped to your end customer. And so uh, we try to make it as seamless as possible for you to be able to create the designs that you do, and then we'll handle making sure everything gets out to your customer. And you never even have to uh, touch a piece of merchandise. So um, we try to make it as easy as possible for you. And obviously the, the key component to this in, is that final step, which is uh, shipping. And so obviously the topic of our webinar today. And so um, some of the things that we're, we're seeing are really, I think, uh, macro trends and macro things that are impacting shipping as a whole. Brian, do you want to kind of talk through some of this? Because I, I know you're watching this yeah. every single day. And I mean, these are really yeah. important things that the average person isn't looking out for or seeing. So can you walk us through some of this? Sure. Thanks, Cap. And, and uh, look, I think 2020 is going to be a year uh, like we haven't seen before. I think we'll go through a lot of this through the presentation. But just to set the stage, We've seen a preview of holiday 2020 in April and May at sort of the height of lockdowns. Uh, I think a, a number of people, if you, if you ordered anything through April and May, you experienced a lot of the issues that production and shipping partners faced. And just to sort of give you an idea, uh, we saw sort of sales rise 24% in April and May. They're expected to rise 35% in November and December. So even with more time, we're going to see a, a significantly larger increase in the underlying sales volume. And I think one thing to think about for 2020, especially from a holiday gifting season, this season will be much more around tangible gifts rather than experiential gifts, given the sort of uncertainty and where things are going to go into 2021. So there's a lot more sort of physical products that are going to be uh, uh, gift giving as, a, as sort of a share of a wallet. Uh, while we have a bit more time to prepare, changes are coming. One thing Guten has done is we, we, we will have doubled our staff by the time holiday comes in. We, uh, like everyone else, got caught out a bit in April and May and, and did our best to keep up. So we have a lot more uh, hands on deck. But, uh, you know, I, I think no matter how big we grow and no matter how big our partners grow, you know, expected package surges that Nate will talk through a lot of issues that the USPS has been seeing recently, which is you know absolutely core to getting things delivered, especially in the US network, means that the shipping agents will face issues that they're still not prepared for, even with the additional time. Um, and then the, the one final thing to think about that's going to impact an interconnected uh, logistics network is localized shutdown should a second wave come or should another surge in COVID cases and, and lockdown orders come, are going to affect people on a much broader network. Distribution centers and production centers that may be three or four states away will impact the delivery of items uh, as they go through sorting facilities. So it's, it's a lot to sort of consider. We'll go through a lot of the, the ways that we're kind of attacking this, but I think setting the macroeconomic stage here is gonna be incredibly important when we talk about the individual shipping issues that, that we're gonna face for, for 2020. Brian, did you want to just touch also just on some of these kind of like political issues and kind of shifting regulations as well and just kind of yeah, what, what, what I, will that mean to people? I think we've dealt with a lot of those. I think there's still a lot of uncertainty. We see, you know, the, the nice thing that we're seeing outside of the headlines is day to day, there's an enormous amount of great people trying to get this job done. You see Amazon hiring 100,000 workers. FedEx is expecting to hire 70,000 workers. Really, the idea is no matter what's going on around sort of items, what's done is done in some ways. And, and we're now shifted, and I think this is really what we're gonna try to go over today. What needs to be done now is how early can we get started with items? This is not a holiday season in which waiting for the last day is, is going to work out. Uh, and, and certainty also helps. We are certain we know what's going on on September 23rd. I am also certain I don't know what's going to be happening on October 15th or November 1st. So I think that's one of the other major items is, you know, while Guten has made a plan and we absolutely recommend that our, our merchant partners make a plan, uh, you know, the, the only thing that we know about our plan for holiday is it's not going to go according to plan. Uh, but we have a lot of sort of options to, to feed off of that. I think 
we feel really comfortable with the amount of raw materials that we have with a lot of the uh, sort of broader sourcing that we have so that we have uh, the, the, the sort of physical manufactured goods that we'll be able to turn into all of the orders that we expect to uh, receive this year. Uh, I, I do think though that, that that sort of last mile piece going from you know, our production partners, warehouses to your end customer is really the thing that we're, that we're trying to focus on because it is such an important piece. We can do everything right. And if that order doesn't get to the end customer, none of, none of the rest of it matters. Yeah, I, I, I got to just ask you to uh, uh, repeat one phrase that you always tell me, which is right, you know, like one, what is it, one or 2% of the industry may lose packages, but that's, that's, that's 100% right. no, to your consumer. Uh, uh, that's right. right. And, 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 and we say that all the time is we try to deal with our, our merchant partners on the account level. We really want to make sure that your business is being driven forward. But in, in regular times, 1% of packages end up being lost in transit. The other thing that we try to do at Guten is recognize for that 1%, 100% of their items have been lost. 100% of their orders are affected and impacted. One of the things that we've done is we're, we're adding 10 more partner support agents this year to be able to handle what we expect to be you know, a surge and really make sure that we can do anything that we can uh, on behalf of our merchant partners. Uh, on an individual order level as well as on an account level. Yeah, I think that's so key. And I, I know you always remind us that uh, it's all about that end consumer at the end of the day and making sure right. that you know we're helping our merchant partners take care of that consumer. So um, definitely uh, uh, thanks for that, Brian. Uh, Nate, I'm going to shift over to you because like uh, we're seeing a ton of uh, headlines uh, coming up in the press, uh, you know, kind of building on what Brian was saying. Um, you know, there's going to be surcharges, pricing, delays, you know, like Brian mentioned, Amazon, FedEx are trying to hire more people. What does all this mean, Nate? I mean, it's going to be, like Brian said, like a pretty wild holiday. Um, you know, we're seeing numbers that we're, we've never seen before. We saw, like, a lot of people are calling this second Christmas because we saw these holiday numbers two, three months ago. And, you know, same thing with Guten is like, we saw numbers we didn't expect to see and we're a little bit caught off guard. Um, so the last couple months, and this goes across the industry, people are just trying to catch up a little bit. Um, I mean, the businesses, companies, the carriers are, um, but yeah, I mean, it's going to be a crazy holiday. Um, I mean, it's like, but again, like Brian said, it's only going to be exacerbated if we get a second COVID uh, or a second kind of resurgence of this um, going into flu season, you know, a lot of the kind of stuff that, you know, we ha had during the peak of COVID, like, you know, less people in the distribution centers and, you know, more mail was being boated instead of flown. Like those kind of things have eased a little bit now, but it's, it's you know, it can, it can go right back into it. Um, and that is kind of the worry that we're trying to plan for. Um, you know, a lot of the headlines too, we've seen around USPS. Um, I mean, they account for like 40% of final delivery for most packages. So, it's one of those things where like, you know, the USPS is having problems. It's probably going to ripple across the entire industry. Um, so, yeah, I mean. Yeah. Well, it seems like, like uh, it again. seems like there's a, a huge set of impacts, right? So um, yeah. why don't you talk about some of those things? Yeah. So, I mean, the biggest thing we're going to see this year, and it's pretty uncommon for the most part, is just a, a holiday surcharge. So, anybody ship something or, you know, been responsible for talking with UPS, they, they generally throw in like a, a slight surcharge here and there in normal holidays. Um, this is the first year in history that USPS has ever had a surcharge, which right there is pretty crazy. Like, you know, when we're talking about how much mail that the post office goes through, like they're charging anywhere from 24 cents to $1.50 on packages. Like it's, it's going to hit again, like I said, every single, you know, tier of the Guten uh, Nick, platform, it's going to hit. Nate, yeah. what's the timing of that surcharge? When do we expect yeah, it to begin and, and do we anticipate it to end at some point? Yeah, so again, this is just strictly holiday surcharge that I'm talking about. So a lot yeah. of these start middle of October. I think USPS and UPS are like October 17th and they end like right after Christmas. So a lot of these are 20, uh, December 27th. Some of them go to the end of the year, but it's really just going to be this last holiday period like to cover right before Black Friday, Thanksgiving, um, a little bit of Halloween and all of the Christmas season. 
Um, I know. Yeah. I so know. there's not really much you can avoid. Like it's going to be, you're yeah. going to, like, everyone's going to be faced with these surcharges. Uh, okay. If you order anything, you know, in the next couple weeks. I know in the, in the later uh, part of the presentation, Brian's got some great uh, tips and discussion points around how to deal with some of that. So I'm excited to get to that. Um, yeah. Nate, what about lack of data? What does that mean? Yeah. So again, like we're going into a holiday season that's very unfamiliar for a lot of people. Um, that being said, like usually carriers um, and a lot of other people have data showing like, oh, look, ground shipments will take exactly five days to get from New York to California, like that kind of stuff. We still have a lot of that information, but not a lot of carriers are publishing a lot of that information. So kind of going into what I was saying about those ship cutoffs, um, every carrier every year puts out like a guaranteed your PIP package. If you ship this UPS ground or whatever method, we'll deliver before Christmas if you order it on like December 17th or something like that. I forget what last year was. This year, they don't have those. So they took away all the, or not all, but most of the guarantees on timed methods like that back in March. So, you know, now, I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll most likely still put out some sort of guideline. Again, we have no idea if that's gonna be accurate. The way Guten's doing it is we're taking a combination of our production times and a combination of our historical data and we're coming up with a good range, uh, you know, a very conservative kind of area to make sure you get your stuff before Christmas. Um, you know, that's the biggest thing. And like kind of how Brian said before is like, we can't stress enough, like the earlier, the better. Like, you know, if one thing goes sideways in the, in the industry, like if there's another COVID resurgence, those guidelines that we have, those guidelines that, you know, UPS, or USPS puts out are going to go out the window. Like it's going to get updated. And that's one thing that like, we're going to be monitoring a lot. We'll get to this later, but we're going to be monitoring a lot. And just, yeah. you need to be very observant as a customer that like things are up, up in the air <laughs> for the most part. That's right. And then, and then uh, you combine that with uh, demand volumes increasing, like Brian mentioned. I mean, that's uh, uh, kind of amazing to think about, like it's just even more volume on an already uh, tax system. Yeah, I mean, like Brian said, like, it's going to be a year for e-commerce. Like, we even saw it from Q2 to Q3 now, you know, we've seen, like, up, upwards of 5 6% of total, you know, volume for sales and, and buying and retail being on, on e-commerce. So, that accounts for, like, another $200 billion each quarter. And that was, you know, the first Christmas, like I mentioned before. The second Christmas, we, they're expecting more than that. Um yeah. yeah. So well, the, just the I think I think we well, we have some uh, some stats around that, right? So like uh, I right. Mean, so here's the such a spike, data, right? Like exactly. So here's the historical data of e-commerce sales as a total of like all retail sales for the last ten years. You know, obviously everybody knows e-commerce is exploding, like regardless of COVID, regardless of the year. You can see it's been an uprise. But the last year, like from Q3 to Q1, look at that. And then the same thing, you know, they're expecting from Q2 to Q3 be another 5%, or, you know, up, upwards of 17, 18% of all sales. There I mean, this go. was, this was just the metrics that. from last year, right? Right. So last year, U USPS alone, not even talking FedEx, UP UPS, DHL, just USPS alone delivered 80 million packages between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Like wow. that is a, a lot of mail. And again, again, like, you know, to go back to those headlines, you know, the, the exacerbation with the election, all this kind of mail that's just the raw amount of mail is something that's been hard to keep up with this COVID, this, this, COVID and this holiday and this, this year. Well, and, and I'll just uh, make one comment. I mean, I, I'm still, you know, relatively new to Guten and certainly how we handle shipping and the world of shipping. And it was fascinating to just learn recently from you guys also about how interdependent the carriers like FedEx and UPS are on the USPS infrastructure too. So it's not just even mm -hmm. the fact that USPS is shipping a lot, but it's every other carrier depends on their their backbone too. So yeah, hundred percent. Pretty... And that like that's what Mark's talking about is a lot. Like I said before, like forty percent of mail is usually is USPS found delivery. So we're talking like our UPS mail stations. FedEx has a product, DHL has a product where it's picked up by UPS, but then still goes through the post office for the final mile when it gets uh -huh. to your city. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the, the big worry. Yeah. Well, uh, kind of uh, building on that, I know Brian, uh, you want to talk a little bit about what you're seeing in terms of, uh, you know, what 
what you're seeing uh, shoppers are already doing and what, you know, I guess we're encouraging uh, our merchant partners to uh, work on with their customers. Yeah, Mark, I, I think one thing that is is sort of helpful here, as as Nate referred to second Christmas this year, which uh, <laughs> which felt very different than a Christmas season as we were going through it, certainly, <laughs> uh, is it does seem like, especially a lot of U.S. consumers are expecting or almost conditioned to delays in shipments and are already thinking about pre-purchasing or purchasing uh, for the holidays significantly ahead of what would otherwise be a last minute shopping season. Uh, and, and, and I think more and more over the past five years has, has almost been conditioned to be a last minute shopping season. So not only are, you know, not only is, is the shipping concern creating a need to start pulling uh, orders up, U.S. shoppers are already thinking about the holiday season because they don't want to run into a, a last minute uh, sort of break here. And I think even outside of shipping concerns, one of the things that we really encouraging our merchant partners to recognize is the end customer is has a specific amount of wallet share and whether our merchant partners begin to do their promotions early or not, other merchants are. Uh, a, a lot of things are getting pulled forward. So the idea of competing in the holiday season is going to be very, very different this year as merchants are going to start getting inundated I can remember when, you know, uh, holiday commercials starting mid-November would seem sort of crass. We are going to see them before Halloween this year. And so that, that sort of conditioning for the end customer is going to be there this year. Uh, I think we're really looking to sort of sound the alarm and, and, and make sure that people understand, take the shipping consideration out of it because people are going to look for holiday promotions even earlier this year. Yeah. It, it does seem like this slide is almost a little bit of a good news, bad news. Good that 25% right. of people are already doing this, you know, sort of, but leave 75% of that universe still to get educated that they got to get going and make their purchases now if they expect to have things uh, arrive in time for the holidays. And Mark, I think the point here is also not to sort of be alarmist. I think yeah. the point is to say on September 23rd for our merchant partners, do you have a holiday calendar laid out? Have you done a lot of the blocking and tackling? I think that's where when we get to our best practices, really thinking about doing those in September so that you can start to execute on those so that you can have that condition. When we talk about things like increases in shipping pricing, we talk about things like increases in transparency and communication, Get those started now so that you can really start to sell. You can start to see where this is and you could be much more proactive as, you know, as Nate said, as things sort of go sideways, we can be reactive to that. That's great. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think we have another, sort of another point on that too, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah so and I think this is, you know, this is that idea, uh, uh, Mark, about that idea of, Online shoppers, you know, I think you can go back and see a lot of things from uh, April and May where, you know, people were conditioned that two day shipping meant two day shipping. I think, you know, more than almost half of consumers have now experienced the shipping delay, whether that's because of an out of stock item or, or issues with shippers. So, you know, again, I think people will be a little bit more reasonable. Um, uh, a, a little, uh, again, a little bit more reasonable. It's always interesting to talk about reasonableness and, and shipping uh, in the same sentence. Uh, but obviously, the more the, the more we sort of are proactive on this, I think the better. Yeah, and I think I mean I I know we've talked about it internally. I know you started to share it today, and we'll talk about it even more later. But um, I think it, you know this whole notion that um, you know shoppers, you know, and how they. Um, I guess, start taking action if they feel that uh, something's like gonna be delayed, like they start, you know, writing bad reviews and start calling tech support and, you know, you know, you know, it really angers, I think, the end consumer if they don't know what's going on. So a lot of this is certainly transparency of information and uh, customer service plays a huge role in mitigating a lot of this. Right. Yeah. Um, so uh, one more stat for you, Brian, I think you were going to talk about. Yeah, I, I think this is the one where, and I, I know that this becomes an issue. Nate's already brought up that idea of the last mile for 40% of packages, even that aren't shipped with USPS from the outset. 
that are shipped with UPS mail innovation, certain DHL shipments, certain FedEx shipments, rely on a UPS ship, uh, a UPS scan to mark the item as delivered. Uh, and you know where 96%, historically 96% of shipments get scanned, we saw a 10% drop off through uh, April and May, causing massive issues from a transparency uh, standpoint. Yeah. So where, where we typically absolutely rely on that idea of uh, an item being marked as delivered as sort of closing out uh, an order, I think one of the things that we're gonna talk through is that idea of transparency and that idea, frankly, of following up to understand and say, hey, you know, we hope you got your item. We're really excited about this. If there are any issues, please contact us so that we can discern the difference between something that was not scanned, but still delivered. So, so it's, it's, it's marrying that idea of our merchant partners having the, the uh, uh, a peace of mind that an item ended up getting to an end customer, as we said, even with 96% delivery scans, that's a 3% difference, a 75% yeah, difference between what so. makes it there and what gets scanned. Yeah, and it's all about setting expectations. And I mean, I think we're all, you know, uh, when we all put our consumer hat on, we all get frustrated when we don't know what's going on. And it's like, where's my package and uh, and so on. And uh, I, I, I think, you know, the other takeaway I've, I've had from you guys over, over my time here so far has been, um, you know, this affects everyone. This isn't like a unique Guten only problem, right? Amazon faces it and maybe they try to deal with it a little bit differently because they have their own direct, you know, delivery force, but still uh, this is an industry-wide issue, not just a Guten issue, right? Right, but, but as we said, Mark, the individual end customer with an individual end order, it is their <laughs> issue, no care. matter who it came <laughs> from, no matter who the partner is. And so, and that I think, I think the next slide is our best yeah. practices. I mean, that's where the best practices really come into play is regardless of, of, of whether or not it's an industry-wide problem, there are absolutely best practices that we believe as yeah. they get put in, you know, put into place are gonna be incredibly helpful for our partners. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, just a, a note to everyone out there, uh, keep putting your questions into the chat. I'll uh, pick up those as we get through the, the next section and uh, get uh, Nate and Brian to answer some of the questions that you have there. So please uh, keep adding those in. Uh, I am monitoring them and we'll, uh, we'll take some of those questions after uh, we go through the, the tips and suggestions section, which is basically Okay, guys, you know, we've just, uh, you know, spent 20, 30 minutes here talking about all the challenges and how bad it is, all the doom and gloom. You know, what's the, what's the shiny object here? How do we, how do we uh, find a silver lining to this uh, pretty uh, dark gray cloud? So, uh, Brian, I think uh, you're passionate about uh, this one for sure. I was going to say, if I haven't said it, uh, if I hadn't said it yet, <laughs> promoting early, we feel very, Wait. Uh, very strongly Wait. about Should it. Should we start promoting early? Right, exactly. Um, you know, I, again, uh, sort of going back to this and really trying to make sure that there's there's an understanding there. Amazon typically has their prime day in the middle of July. They moved that back for two reasons. One, they didn't need any uh, they didn't need any additional sort of pressure from a prime day. That's going to be October 13th this year. If you want to think about the unofficial start to online commerce for holiday 2020. October 13th, you can mark it on your calendar. Prime Day is going to get people uh, sort of expecting and looking for promotions. They're going to be online. That's going to be there. Black Friday deals. They're, they're, the Amazon is going to call it a Black Friday deal, and they're going to launch it in early November. So Black Friday <laughs> is now just a, a, a name. It's not even it's a just a, a, any Friday, basically. <laughs> yeah, at Home Depot, which which... Yeah, Home Depot, which we would argue is is probably rivals Amazon for one of the best logistics companies in the world. They're going to start sales on November 8th. And, and, you know, I think the final point to this is Cyber Monday, typically the largest online sales day of the year, save Alibaba Singles Day and, uh, and Amazon Prime Day, is going to look totally different this year because people aren't coming in after Thanksgiving and sitting down at work and shopping on a Monday. Right. And so even that idea of that sort of unofficial start time, if you want to think about that date, October 13th is the date where, again, 
whether or not it's your direct, you know, a, a direct competitor, whether or not you think that someone buying something from your storefront versus Amazon as a direct competitor, the end wallet share will start to get consumed early in October. And so getting the promotions out and setting this up and sort of setting your holiday schedule, running it over almost a three month period is going to obviously help from a uh, cost standpoint, it's going to help from a promotional standpoint, it's going to help from a raw material standpoint, and it's going to avoid some of these, the, these issues that could pop up later in the year. That's great. Um, and so uh, I guess to, to help with some of this too, um, uh, Nate, you want to talk about how uh, we're enabling folks to be able to monitor updates and some of the things that they can do on this front? Yeah, I mean, that's going to be my biggest part of the holiday is just making sure I know what's going on. And then the transparency that involves with me conveying that information to everybody. So it's not only my updating our team, it's updating everybody who uses Guten. Um, so keep an eye on our Twitter, you know, our blogs, there'll be stuff on the admin page. Um, we're going to have, revamp our kind of knowledge center on uh, tra uh, trends and production times. Um, and, you know, we really, like, like I said, I'm going to be focusing on if anything goes sideways, if we see one method performing worse than the other, or one carrier rather, you know, it's all going to be about transparency. So we are going to be uh, tr try to stay on top of everything that happens shipping wise. Um, you know, I'll be on daily calls with our carriers. I'll be on daily calls with the people who pick up the mail. Uh, any kind of error or issue we see will be nipped in the bud as soon as possible. And, and we'll be conveying all this information as, as clear as possible through all of our platforms. Um, I mean, I'll be yeah, posting on LinkedIn about it, is, everything. Yeah, I was going to just say, I think that's the key is, you know, I know my team is working with your team to make sure that as you get new insights and new updates, Dates that we can get that out, whether it's into our our at Guten Updates Twitter feed or into our regular yep. social channels or through email or through our newsletter on our website, in our knowledge base, inside of admin. It'll be everywhere. Uh, yeah, uh, I think, which builds really to uh, the, the next piece. Brian, I know you were going to talk about transparency, but I mean, we're trying to be as transparent as we can, right? Right. And, and I think one thing that's really helpful, you know, within the, the we've literally doubled the staff at Guten to try to be able to help here. We're going to end up having a quarter of our, uh, of our company is in the partner success and partner support roles uh, coming into holiday 2020. So we are going to be there. Utilize partner support at guten.com. When you have questions, when you have issues, we're updating our knowledge base. We're doing anything we can to sort of mirror this transparency. What we absolutely recommend, though, is if you haven't looked at your shipping page, if you haven't looked at your sort of post-order order confirmation emails, do that now. Do that right away. And really make sure it's very, very clear. If there's an issue, how do they contact you? How do they reach out? What are the two or three most important issues, which is where is my order uh, my order seems to be delayed. What are you doing about this? You can proactively put a lot of that on. We've already brought up the idea of saying, you know, after a week or two weeks after the order, have an order follow up. How did your order go? Sort of solicit that idea of having an outlet for your customers to come in and talk to you rather than, as Mark said, uh, leaving a negative review or, you know, worse, uh, going straight to a credit card company and disputing a charge. Uh, wherever you're getting a question that you don't believe you have an answer to, Guten is here to help you provide that answer. And in a lot of cases, we're training our partner support staff to, to, to make sure that you have the information that you need while at the same time making our platform smarter. We're doing a lot more to be proactive where we see issues within the production or shipping environment so that we can reach out to you and proactively give you the information before one of your customers ends up reaching out themselves. That's great. Thanks, Brian. And I, I know hopefully our, uh, our VIM loyalty program will help uh, with uh, people knowing, you know, what to expect as well. I mean, transparency just is, is the name of the day, name of the game for us. And we're trying to do everything we can to do that. Um, uh, the next one, Brian, I, you had some amazing thoughts around this and like how our merchants should be thinking of shipping, uh, not just as an afterthought, but truly as a product. And certainly I, I know I've taken that lesson learned from you. Uh, can you talk about this a little bit? Yeah. 
and I think and I've seen a couple of the, the questions in the chat. And we can deal with, uh, sort of address those directly at the end. Yeah. But you know, this idea about uh, surcharges around packages uh, and shipping costs increases across the board in shipping costs, uh, whether it's due to increases in freight rates or uh, Nate, something you've dealt with a lot, the idea of dimensional shipping, which is where weight is no longer the issue, it's the size of the item. So shipping a pillow has become much more expensive because while it's a light item, it's much larger. Um, the end customer has been conditioned by Amazon not to care about this and not to think about this. 75% of customers expect items to be shipped for free, even at under uh, a $50 shipment rate, which, which historically had been sort of the break point. If you hit $50 in cart value, you would get shipping for free. There's a few things that we really try to stress to our, our merchant partners. Even though your end customer doesn't think of this, shipping is a product. Every time you put an individual product order through the Guten platform, you are buying a second product. That product is the shipping as a product. Think about and really look at your pricing and think about your holiday promotions to build in as much as you possibly can, as much as you believe your product and your storefront and, and, and our, you know, our, our thousands of merchant partners are gonna know their storefronts better than we will, of course. But think about where you can put some of the shipping cost into the product uh, 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 cost that uh, consumers are much more willing to pay, as strange as this may sound, they're much more willing to pay $2 more for a product and save $2 on shipping, even though the end sort of uh, uh, landed cost is the same amount. Uh, one of the biggest things that we see from a conversion rate increase standpoint is that idea of having free shipping. Uh, one of the nice things about uh, uh, selling, especially customized products, but really products that are that have a two to three day production time, it means that your customers are not necessarily going to be expecting the Amazon condition two day free shipping. So the, the sort of balance between fast and free, while it's certainly a consideration, and I think we'll address one of the questions that came through around sort of three days versus five days in shipping, uh, really making sure that shipping is free becomes a, 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 you know, sort of a pricing strategy as much as it is obviously understanding the underlying costs. Um, so really look at sort of where you can include some of the shipping cost into the product margin. And I think finally, and, and, and probably most importantly, especially from a conversion rate standpoint, look back over the past nine months, look back over the past 12 months, you're gonna know your own customers but offer free shipping at a 110% or 115% average cart value. So if your typical transaction is $30, offer free shipping at 35. What that's going to ultimately do is that's gonna drive up the sort of cart value uh, of, of your sale price while margin mixing and, and absorbing some of the shipping costs that, that's involved with that. Um, Kev, I know we'll, we'll do a lot more around average cart value and conversion rates through a lot of our other uh, webinars here, but really thinking about the idea of separating you as a merchant looking at two costs, production cost and shipping cost, and recognizing the end consumer expects one cost, which is effectively a fully landed cost built in for the product. Yeah, uh, great points. And I, I think it's a lot of key things that you know, our, our merchant partners really need to think through is how do they layer that in? I think you've given some good suggestions. So um, thanks for that. I know we're gonna keep digging in right. on that uh, as we uh, continue to move forward. Um, you know, kind of, you know, I'll, I'll say one of the, the you know, the, the elephant in the room. So what should people do to plan for delays? Like what, what does this really mean? What other things can they be doing to plan for these delays? And like, you know, what does that really look like? And I think, Mark, this is the sort of final piece here is exactly every other piece, right? Expect the unexpected here. I think, is, as Nate said, there is no guarantees and guaranteed shipping this year, um, which is confusing <laughs> to all of us. We're consumers as well. I buy things online. Uh, when I have guaranteed three-day, when I pay for guaranteed three-day shipping and then they immediately tell me it's not guaranteed, I'm very confused. Uh, so 
you know, I, I think it really is planning for delays is promoting early, is monitoring the updates, is remaining transparent with your end customers, is shipping as a product, is is being transparent and communicating with that, keeping that conversation between the you know uh, our merchants and your end customer, and then obviously including Guten in that, asking those questions. We will be incredibly transparent this year with that sort of idea of. Um, of, of being much more proactive around items you'll hear much more this year than you ever have from us before on an individual order item level. I think the one other thing to understand is really understand what lost in transit means. Delayed and lost in transit are sort of two different things. And we have this built out on our website of what that means. Uh, you know, for standard shipping, it's, it's sort of after the 12 day mark, we're gonna consider something to be lost in transit. Expedited is five days, overnight is two days international shipping is 21 days. And so there's also a choice that needs to be made here. And we've seen this for a few of our partners who say, I'm going to set my own, uh, I'm going to set my own, call it lost in transit. It may still arrive so that I'm going to put an order in. If that item ultimately never arrives, Guten will ultimately refund you. But what you've done is you've created a situation by which you've actually increased the satisfaction for the end customer on the back of what we've seen is around a 6% margin decrease if you're if you're sort of putting in best practices around, I'm gonna do a reship fairly quickly, I'm gonna ask for very specific things, I'm gonna be much more proactive. So that's another idea of really thinking about what are you gonna to do to get through this holiday season and sort of keep a very happy customer set even where we expect individual issues on individual orders. Hey Brian, that was a really, I think, important tip and suggestion that you had. Can you just maybe explain that in a little bit more detail, that final point on just like, what's the, what's the right cutoff for someone to actually, you know, I guess, do a reprint and, and get something reshipped? Uh, can you just kind of go into that a little bit more detail? Just because yeah. I, I think that was a really key point that it can really save people on customer service. And uh, I, I just want to make sure people really understand that. Sure, and, and unfortunately, Mark, this is one of those, it's more art than science, but we right, have to right. at some point make some science to it, right? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And, and at all times and, and, and throughout the, the sort of history of Guten, we've worked with our, our, our merchants and, and just so everybody understands, my message to our, our partner support team is, act as if the end customer is your end customer. We look to work with our merchant partners always to keep our eye on the forest through the trees and order, you know, an individual order is a tree, but, but your business is the forest and how can we make sure that works? At the same time, we have to provide some guidance around what the lost in transit is versus delayed, especially this year. And so I think what we're really recommending, Mark, is the idea of saying each one of our merchant partners has their own business, has their own relationship with their end customers, has their own sort of value proposition. Really think of what that means. For, for some of our merchant partners, taking the Guten uh, guidelines around what we consider to be lost in transit and, and branding them and putting on their website, that's perfectly fine. And you can do that and you can match that. But for some of our partners, especially those where there's a lot more value potentially in the content. So just taking the idea of, a, a, of the, the, the sort of retail sales price on an eight by 10 photograph is, is 20 to $25 where the underlying cost of the item is like two or $3 plus shipping, right? So where there's a much higher margin, really think about what you can do to increase customer satisfaction because the value of each order is so much higher than for example, something like a pillow as we brought up earlier where the shipping cost is so significant because of size of the item. Uh, on on sort of how you're going to handle things like exception management and shipping delays. Yeah, uh, great. I, I thought that was fantastic, Brian. Thanks uh, for going into some more detail on that. Um, yep. So we're kind of coming up on uh, time here. So, um, you know, I, I picked out a few of the questions that kind of came from chat and some of the things that came up. So one of the first things that just was, uh, was came up, uh, I'll, I'll pick on this just because you had mentioned it towards the end was like just the international piece and, and how, how does tracking work in the international space? Uh, is there international tracking? Yeah, I, I can take this one, Brian. So we offer a, a wide variety of international packages, all of the, all of which should be tracked. Um, 
it kind of gets a little tricky. And this is a little bit uh, of COVID's fault as well as when it gets into that destination country, that post office, we have, uh, you know, not as much visibility once it hits their hands. Um, so even still, there are countries that we've not been able to ship for the last four or five months just because of COVID. Um, so yes, international packages should be tracked 100% up until it hits the country. Once it hits that country, depending on that country's infrastructure and local carrier, that's where it can get a little spotty. Um, a lot of the methods we use don't have a final delivery scan internationally, just, just sheer price. Like to get a final delivery scan and confirmation on every single interna international package would already spike up a, a very expensive method. Yeah. Not to talk yeah. about those kind of dimensional settings yeah, Brian yeah. was talking about, like on a, on a large package, you're talking like, you know, double, triple, or, or even more your original cost, right? 100% yeah. this package has been to dropped off the door kind of, kind of method. Yeah. Thanks, Nate. Um, so uh, one other question that had come up just quickly was the cert, uh, just uh, kind of high level on the surcharge, it's, uh, is it per item or per order? It's going to be per order on our end. Okay. Um, so the way that the way that essentially all the carriers are doing it is it's each label. So you know if you have a, an order that's like eighty something items, it's not very common freight order. I mean we we have freight services, but oftentimes there might be two two labels. Um, we're still probably likely going to charge you one one surcharge for those, um, just out of simplicity's sake. But yeah, uh, yeah it's 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 going to be a, or, a per order level. Got it. And, and then Brian, I think one quick question that had come up was just, what's the percentage again of shipments that are lost? Yeah, and th this one's a difficult answer, uh, Bruce. The rule of thumb historically is 1% of shipments are lost. We, that's, that's a sort of industry known, industry standard item. I quote that as, as all of the Guten teammates know, I say it all the time. 1% uh, of shipments are lost, but for that 1%, it's 100% of those items. Um, and so, you know, sort of that idea, if you want to use that rule of thumb as 1%, I think the more difficult piece for on-demand for, for, for partners of Guten is you're relying because you're shipping direct to your end customer, you don't get to see that item in hand. For those 4% of items that are not scanned, what's the difference between delivered and not delivered other than a customer complaint? And so now you're going from 1% of, of sort of factually lost shipments now to 4% of unscanned shipments now increasing at least through the April and May timeframe of USPS. So uh, generally you can use a 1% sort of assumption. Uh, all the carriers that, that Guten utilizes, USPS, DHL, FedEx, and, and UPS pretty much have the same kind of rate. Um, as we say, Guten handles the, those sort of lost in transit items. I think the big question is, what is the official delayed versus lost? That's when it becomes incredibly difficult. And as some of our partners are pointing out, especially, especially, especially where the shipping method starts with one carrier and ultimately transitions to USPS because it's just one more handoff that can, that can cause an issue. Got it. Okay, I, I want to, uh, I know we're kind of ru running down on time here. So I really, uh, this one may be a little bit more intricate question. I tried to summarize a bunch of what I saw in the, in the, in the chat, um, which seems to revolve overall around just like shipping dates. And it's like, there's a, you know, when the label was printed, when it actually got shipped, when it actually got delivered, you know, dates between like handoffs between carriers. Uh, it just seems like the dates of shipping are super confusing. And I was just trying on my own little sheet of paper here to map it out. Um, can you guys comment on just like, how should our, our customers, our merchant partners be thinking about shipping dates in general and and when we talk about a date what does that date really mean um cap let me let me i'll take sort of the production and shipping okay. label creation <laughs> idea and then nate why don't you take that idea of okay. of kind of what the process is post kind of pick up by the carrier uh, so two, two two key things and, and i saw this in the chat and I'm, I'm i'm scrolling up quickly just to be able to address it uh directly bill we absolutely do not allow for the creation of a label before that package is ready to be picked up. That is 100% out of bounds. We have actually deprecated multiple vendor partners who historically utilized 
the shipping label to track the item through the production process because it created a unique number, but it created the, this exact problem. And so what you most likely saw, and, and, and please after this, and, and my email is brian at guten.com. We don't really hide this. Bill, shoot over the order number. I'll look into your exact one because this is something I care about a lot. Um, typically what ends up happening is there are issues between the handoff from sort of the fulfillment center at the manufacturer and the truck that it gets loaded on. That can happen every once in a while. You'll see that come up with something called labor, label created, not yet received is the USPS status that happens on that. Usually that's going to occur for six to 12 to 18 hours between the handoff uh, at the manufacturing center and then getting to the first distribution point. First distrib uh, distribution point creates a scan. That now says, okay, USPS now has this package. UPS now has this package. We're shipping 10 or 20 or 30,000 orders a day. One or two or three of those are going to get lost. And then it's going to get caught on the second scan or the third scan, which creates that kind of delay. As I said, we're creating sort of intelligence within our system, start following up on those much more, uh, sort of much more uh, uh, proactively. Those are gonna happen every once in a while. I can tell you with great certainty, no manufacturer in our system creates a shipping label before that item is ready to go out. No more really than, than, than 24 hours or, or sort of the next pickup. That's great, thanks Brian. Uh, Nate, you wanna build on that? Yeah, so to piggyback kind of the next step of that, you know, the, the transit fully. Um, so yeah, like like Brian said, there can be times when the package may miss, you know, whatever pickup, the truck's too full. Once UPS and FedEx get it, they generally bring it to their DC. And this is where we've seen historically very little issue. So you, when UPS gets it or FedEx gets it or DHL gets it, tracking picks up, we see all the labels, the label scans, hits to their DC. Once it gets to the local, kind of uh, post office for UPS, MI, and that kind of stuff, that's where it get a little hairy. And that's where we saw that 10% spike that we mentioned earlier. Um, so the US Postal Service out of sheer, back, and this is kind of why we're saying prepare for the worst, because just out of sheer amount of volume, they had their scan rate drop about 10%. And 10% of that, you know, 10, 20, 30,000 packages a day, Brian's talking about adds up really quickly. Um, so, you know, I saw a handful of packages. I received a package from a separate company that I ordered from that I got no tracking, you know, for the first five, six days. And all of a sudden it caught up once it finally hits one scan. But, um, you know, the kind of the way that these shipping scans work is that, you know, it goes through, I don't know, sometimes a dozen different scans. So it will pick up eventually. Like, it's just a matter of which and which spot and where. Um, and that's where we're going to see delays this holiday. Probably not in UPS hands is my prediction, but in the USPS hands, in that handoff where the Postal Service gets it, the truck's full. We've, um, you know, we're, we're gonna work with the Postal Service and UPS um, just to target these kind of hot zones. So like one big one previously was like Brooklyn, where we're from, where, where I live, the Postal Service there was wicked backed up. Like we would, we were seeing scans like, you know, five, six, seven days where nothing moved. And we're not talking every single package, we're talking a couple packages, but just out of the sheer amount of volume is kind of where we're gonna be, we're gonna be worried this season. And again, this is not a Guten thing, like the more Guten ships, the more everyone else is gonna ship. Yeah. And we're gonna see these delays, but in the same yeah. sense, Brian said, like things are delivering, things are shipping, yeah. things are still moving. It's yeah. just a matter of those delays. So, uh, Nate, oh, and, and Kat, ahead, yeah, just one more thing on that, yeah. Nate. Uh, you know, when we talk about making our system smarter, and, and Nate's uh, sort of, uh, you know, point about Brooklyn being a specific call it hot zone, even though he dropped the New England wicked uh, in his response. <laughs> uh, so thank you for that multi regional dialect <laughs> there. Um, you know, we, we were seeing reports of the effectively the regional postmaster, the, the head saying, look, if, if scan delays are slowing you down, just get the package out, right? And that was, a, that was a localized choice. Our data is going to help us actually say, okay, we're seeing things going through X distribution center or DC. Uh, you know, we're seeing those get delayed. So if you're shipping an item to Massachusetts, for example, we're seeing a much higher spike on a relative basis. We're gonna be doing a lot of that and sharing that back out. What I will say is, I think, you know, we absolutely feel like the packages, as, as Nate said, are going to get delayed. 
we really are encouraging that direct consumer communication to say, I cannot rely as I have been able to historically to understand whether or not this item has been delivered, you know, really follow up. It doesn't have to be totally explicit. It can be, are you satisfied with your order or, you know, whatever it is, almost invite that. So again, there is that outlet to say, hey, I actually do have a problem with my order. How can we kind of get this fixed? Yeah, got it. Well thanks, said. thanks, guys. I know uh, we're kind of running out of time here, so I, th I think we're going to have to unfortunately wrap it up. I know there's a lot of good questions still in, in the chat, and we'll try to uh, follow up with folks to make sure that all the answers uh, get done. But you know, really, uh, I think we wanted to kind of wrap up with a quick little summary, right? And um, maybe you can kind of highlight, um, you know, some of this. Uh, both Nate and, and, and Brian is just yeah. that. Um, you know, we're going to do our best to communicate this outbound in every channel that we have available to ourselves. Um, you know, where will, where, you know, is there one point that you guys think, you know, people should really center their attention on and, you know, how we should be communicating some of this stuff out? Any particular things, Brian, that you want us yeah. to make sure we get out to our merchant uh, community? Yeah, and, and, and let me address, because I've, I've seen a lot in the in the chat around what is the surcharge going to be and when are those going to come out. I, I, I think we should absolutely try to address that. And it's not that we're trying to obfuscate here. It's it's we, we got two different answers from our UPS rep last week. Um, and so what we can go on right now is this. Surcharges, uh, as Nate said, we're still, am I, am I still on? There we go. Yep. We're back. Yeah, you're back. Okay. <laughs> Surcharges are going to look a little bit different between the different carriers, whether that's, uh, I think, Nate, it's, it's like 24 cents for, um, UPS for MI. USPS MI, all the way up to $4 a package for UPS. And we're going to do anything we can to try to lower those. We want to get those out as early as we possibly can, but also make sure that they're as correct as possible. The one thing that we really don't want to do is we don't want to give you a price and then come back on it. As Nate said, we want to provide that certainty. If you want to start thinking about it right now, Nate, I know you're going to, you're going to get mad at me here. I think if you want to really think sort of carefully about this and you want to protect yourself, assume a $2 surcharge on a per package basis, especially on our larger items. If you wanna think about larger, think anything over a pound. I think that's probably safe. I think that gives you the ability to plan. That sits between the $1 and $4 UPS rates that we're still trying to negotiate on and understand. We're doing whatever we can with our, merchant, our manufacturing partners to margin mix. Um, so we'll do anything we, we, we can uh, the shipping surcharges for the question that just came in, we do expect those right now to be only U.S. Nate, I believe. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. Like UPSMI is the not only other international. Sort of, yeah. Yeah. Great. The, 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 the last thing that I'll say is, uh, I know that there was a question around why don't we just ship USPS if it's ultimately going to be handed off to the USPS on the last, you know, for last mile delivery. This comes down to fast versus free. This comes down to offering the cheapest possible shipping options across the board and making sure that these things are getting there, recognizing that's there. At any time, there's always the opportunity to go expedited. One thing that we can say for certain is if you choose expedited shipping method, it is a single carrier all the way when it goes domestic US to domestic US. It is never handed off, whether that's USPS all the way, UPS all the way or FedEx all the way. And so we, we do have to kind of, uh, we do have to kind of add those two options of if it wants to go all the way, it's up to double the price more to be able to get that done. But it certainly does provide that certainty and does cut down on the number of days that it takes to get in. Awesome. Uh, I, I think that was a great final point and great clarification on expedited. I even made that note myself. So, um, Guys, thank you so much. Uh, you guys uh, gave a full hour of your time today. And I know you guys prepped a lot for this and it's such an important topic. I know, Brian, you've encouraged us all to make sure we're communicating widely about shipping. And, and I think our commitment to uh, our merchant customers, our merchant partners is that, you know, as soon as we get information and we can consolidate it and, and articulate it out properly, we'll share that information out through all our different channels and make sure folks are brought up to speed as, as much as possible. Uh, so 
uh, Nate, Brian, thank you guys so much for doing this today. And for everyone out there, thanks for joining in and participating. We have a whole active uh, uh, webinar series coming up every Wednesday at the same time. Uh, our marketing team will be sending out more emails with uh, uh, sort of the, the follow on sequence of, of webinars and other things that we're gonna be covering on. Um, stay tuned also for um, October 1st is when your VIM benefits actually take hold. So you, some exciting things there. So uh, hopefully you see that uh, Gooden's working hard for you. Uh, we appreciate your business and uh, thank you again and uh, good luck in the holiday season coming up here. Let us know how we can help you. Thanks everyone, appreciate it.